People are always asking me how I sharpen my files. Do I use Lightroom? Uh, do I use Adobe Camera Raw or something else? Well, I actually use something else. I use this file sharpener here. I would like to start at the front edge and using a, a straight movement away from the body, you can sharpen the front edge of the file and then the back like that. And then um, before you know it, your files are as sharp as you need. Top tip. Hi, my name's Matt Widgery from mattwidgery.com. Obviously, uh, that was a little bit of a joke. I am not going to be talking about sharpening those files. I'm going to be talking about sharpening these files. These are the, um, these are the, the files that come out of the Fuji cameras, the RAF RAW files. And I'm going to be showing you two separate ways to sharpen them very, very quickly. I'm not going to spend long on this because I want to show you that it's uh, perfectly possible to do this two separate ways probably more besides, but I'm going to focus on particularly two of them. So this is the file that we're going to be starting with. This is the lovely Moira. Moira came into my studio the other day because she wanted to get some headshots done for her website, profile pictures for her website, which you should go and visit, by the way. It's jawbox.co.uk. And what her and her husband Chris do is voiceovers. So, um, yeah, if you need um, professional voiceovers for corporate videos or for TV or for radio or anything in that sphere, uh, we want a lovely uh, crisp spoken voice. Go to Moira and Chris because they're brilliant. Uh, but anyway, that's by the by. Today, we're not going to be looking at the whole of the image. We're only going to be looking at this bit here. There we go. It's the eye because if you get the eye nice and sharp, nothing else really matters, frankly. In a portrait, you need that nice and crisp. So, um, just before um, the complaints start about, you know, oh, what I've already done to the picture and things like that, you can, let, let's just reset it. This is how it came out of the camera entirely. Um, and you can see that Adobe have put some sharpening on there. So we're going to take that off because we're going to do all this ourselves. Um, so, oh, the other things I did on this, obviously the white balance is all weird. We don't want a green Moira. She's slightly underexposed. So we want a slightly brighter Moira. And also I'm going to change the standard Adobe profile down to the lovely classic Chrome profile that comes from Fuji, because it's brilliant. Look at it, it's lovely. Right, so that's basically all we're gonna do for now. The rest of it, we're all gonna add just in sharpening. So um, I didn't want any complaints going on about you know what I had or hadn't done to the picture beforehand. I also don't really care if anybody says, look, you haven't retouched all the hair out of her face and things like that, because we're not, not gonna be worrying about retouching today. So uh, let's have a look at sharpening, shall we? First of all, let's have a look at, um, uh, let's have a look at uh, Lightroom sharpening uh, and see what we can do just, just in Lightroom, which everybody says you can't do on a Fuji file. So um, I, I like to take this up to about, you know, it's just before you start to get the weird shit, like if you go up all the way, you see how you get these little orange peel looking effects in the, uh, uh, in, in, the in the sort of flat areas. And, and I know you can take it away with the, with masking. You know, if you, if you, if you don't know how to do this, but if you hit alt and then hold the little masking key and then sort of slide it across until it, and the, 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 the white bit is where it's being applied and the black bit is where it's being masked out and won't be applied. So if you take that off there, um, you know, you can see it kind of goes away from some of the eye, but still leaves this weird crap around where the edges are. So uh, I don't like that. I don't like to go as far as that with it. So um, I'm going to take that down to about 70, 60, 70 is usually where I leave that. Um, you know, radius again, if you if you go up with the radius, um, that will it, it will smooth out those those little bits to a certain extent and make them look less edgy. Those little orange peely bits. If you go down, they kind of come back in a little bit, but smaller. So you can use that to taste. I normally leave it about one, something like that. Uh, detail again, if you go too far with detail, things uh, start to look a little speckly. Again, you can't really see it even in one to one. If you go in three to one, you can see this all happening in here. So three to one, you can see this orange peely stuff happening. Um, you know, and if you if you kind of bring it down, see how, that, see how it comes out when you put detail in there, really enhances that orange peel stuff. So I don't really like using that. Um, I would leave that somewhere down there. And yes, you can see a little bit around there, but this is at three to one, remember? So in normal people's uh, you know, views of the picture, which is not even that, frankly, it's that, um, there isn't a problem. So that's, uh, that's Lightroom. I think that's all right. You know, certainly that's how I usually use the picture for my clients when it's just for web use anyway. Um, and even for, for most print, that's fine. I have just started getting um, getting into some of this business. This is the Sharpener Pro 3. That is one of the, the Nick uh, plugins that you can get both for Lightroom and for, uh, for Photoshop as well. So we're going to have a look at this and we're doing a compare and contrast. Oh, before we do this, we'll cancel that out. First of all, we're going to take down, we'll take off all the sharpening from this. And uh, we'll, 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 do a, we'll do another version in, in, uh, in, in Sharpener. And we'll just have a look and see how the two compare and contrast. So 
for my book, I, I would say, you know, the, uh, the, the Lightroom is, is perfectly possible to do. Um, I do agree that there are some weird artifact things that happen when you really blow up an image and start pixel peeping to a, a huge degree. But if you're just doing something that's ever going to be seen on, on like a website, this is going to be a website profile picture, you know, I definitely wouldn't worry about it. Um, if you're, even if you're printing out, like I definitely wouldn't worry about it. it it's, it's, you know, it, it's, it's fine. Um, but, you know, if you're printing out massively and wanting to look at something super, super close, then it might be something that you want to try something else in. But, you know, it's rare. So let's have a look at this um, again on this one. Um, similar sort of thing, really. I like to boost this up to kind of around 70 or 80. Um, and define the edges a little bit with this this slider here, just something around there. I'm just going to do this very, very quickly because I just want to really give you a very quick overview of what's possible um, with the two systems. I'm going to save that back out. That's all I'm going to do to that, literally just uh, you know sharpen the edges a little bit, um, slide the adaptive sharpening up to about 80%. Um, so let's zoom this into 100% there, and we can see it's done a perfectly nice job, and there aren't any of those weird artifacts at all in this one, so I kind of like that. And if we go back over to the other one, this is the one that was in Lightroom. We took all the sharpening off that, remember, so we'll bun some back. Um, so that is with the, uh, we'll just let that load for a second. Um, so there we go. I mean, really, you know, I think that's fine. And um, and then this is the one from uh, from from Sharpener Pro. And I think Sharpener Pro does have the edge, certainly the, the iris in the middle looks a little nicer to me. Than, than this one. There's not a lot in it, frankly. It is slightly sharper on that one and, and probably gets the best out of the files. So on balance, I'd recommend the Nick plugin versus just using it in, in Lightroom. But if all you've got is Lightroom, don't worry. And if you've been like I have been, moving from another system, like the NEF files that came out of the, the, the Nikon, for example, which I always just used to you know do in, in, in Lightroom and then sort of starting to come in and use um, the RAF files, I really wouldn't worry about it. There's nothing wrong with them. A lot of people complain desperately that you can't get a decent job out of them. But, you know, I think we've shown here that you can. Although I would give the edge to the Nick software plugin for that as well. So um, that's it. If you're super worried about super, super sharp and, and fine detail, go with Nick. Uh, if you just want to do a quick job or if it's just for, for web editing, use Lightroom. It's fine. Don't worry about whatever anybody else says. And for the love of God, if you're the sort of, if you've been out there worrying about whether or not to get the Fuji X Trans system because you know you've been reading all these kind of you know uh, far and brimstone forum posts uh, from the usual internet nut jobs that are saying oh you know you can't it, you know Adobe Lightroom is the worst thing in the world for X Trans sharpening and it'll never work. Um, take it with a grain of salt. There we go. There's the proof. It works perfectly all right. So this is the Lightroom one again. That was the Nick. That's the Lightroom. That to me looks, when it's loaded anyway, even before it's loaded, it looks fine actually, but we'll let that load up. Loady, 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 loady. There we are. So that now, to me, looks like a very sharp and beautifully crisp eye. That's it. That's all I've got to say on sharpening for the RAF files. Thanks very much for watching. If you have experience of using other sharpening tools for your Fuji X cameras, please leave them in the comments below and put links to pictures that you've done with those pictures so that we can all see the results for ourselves and learn because I like this to be a community of people that share their uh, skills, talent and resources with each other. So thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you again soon. Cheers.